Well, sometimes in my mind, it doesn't always seem fair. But it really doesn't matter what I think or what he thinks. It's what the Word says. If the Bible says this, we have to stand with it. And that's very important. It says, reprove, rebuke, exhort with great patience and instruction. He mentioned this word reprove. It means to strictly appraise someone, warn them strongly, admonish someone. So he does that, right? Or does he? Well, I would suggest to you that there's a right way. You can do this with a strong voice or a gentle voice. You can do this in a soft way or a stern way. For example, did you know I can preach the word to my son? When I preach the word to my son, I can rebuke him. And when I rebuke him, I can talk just like this. See, <coughs> folks, if you get nothing else, listen to me. It's not about yelling at people. It's not about calling them names. It's about preaching the Bible. In 2 Timothy 2.24, it says this, The Lord's bondservant must not be quarrelsome, be kind to all, able to teach, patient when wronged, with gentleness correcting those who are in opposition, if perhaps God may grant them repentance leading to the knowledge of the truth. Question, does that describe the way that he preaches on campus? Not quarrelsome? Not quarrelsome? Argumentative? Calling people names? 2 Timothy 2.24 is in the same context as 2 Timothy 4. I say this with all gentleness to Micah too. This has to stop. It's giving a black eye to what Christ is all about. Christ didn't talk like this to people. Christ didn't call people names. You say, okay, well what about when he called the Pharisees? Yeah, he called the Pharisees names. <clears throat> the Pharisees he called names were self-righteous. The sinner, he met on their spot. He loved them. He genuinely graciously proclaim the truth. Thanks. <laughs> okay, uh, as I as I clarified, uh, Talking to your son one-on-one -on -one is not what the Bible calls preaching. Uh, look it up in Hebrew, Greek, or English. It always means a public proclamation of truth. Matthew 10, 27, what you hear in the ear, preach upon the housetops. Uh, calling names. Uh, Jesus said in Matthew 23, 33, said, You serpents, you generation of vipers, how can you escape the damnation of hell? Uh, Acts 7, 51, Stephen said, you stiff-necked and uncircumcised in heart and ears. You do always resist the Holy Ghost. As your fathers did, so do you. Acts 13.10, Paul. Paul was not preaching to uh, what we would call Jews. He was talking to Simon the sorcerer. He said, O full, o full of all subtlety and mischief, thou enemy of all righteousness, thou child of the devil, wilt thou not cease to pervert the right ways of the Lord. Jesus said in John 8, 44, you are of your father, the devil. Now, you know, it's not because the people were religious that Jesus was sharp with them. The reason why Jesus was sharp with them was because of their pride. Uh, Israel was very religious. Uh, the Jews were a very religious people. Uh, if you committed adultery in Egypt, you were stoned. Now, in our society, we live in a society where the Bible calls homosexuality an abomination. And a lot of you in this room and most of your fellow students on this campus don't even think it's a sin. You don't even think it's a choice. Uh, but we're not going to show people what sin is unless we preach the law of God. Uh, <clears throat> so Jesus called names. John the Baptist called names. He said, you brood of vipers. 
Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? He called them a bunch of snakes. Now, I'm going to tell you, when you confront people, he said that uh, these the Pharisees were proud. Psalm 10.4 says, The wicked, through the pride of his countenance, will not seek after God. God is not in all his thoughts. Why doesn't the wicked man seek after God? The Bible said the reason why the wicked man doesn't seek after God is because of his pride. Obadiah 1.3 says, The pride of your heart has deceived you. Jeremiah 9, six says, Thine habitation is in the midst of deceit. Through deceit, they refuse to know me. Uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 10 through 12 says, With all deceivableness of unrighteousness, and then that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, that they all might be damned, who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. So we have, we're living in a society full of arrogant, proud people who think that they are too good to go to hell. They think that they are too good for God to send them to hell. And we've got to destroy their pride. Uh, the Bible said in Psalm 36, 1 and 2, The transgression of the wicked says within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flatters himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. Why does a wicked man flatter himself in his own eyes? The Bible says it's because he has no fear of God. Why is there no fear of God? Pro Proverbs 28.14 says, Happy is the man that fears always, but he that hards his heart shall fall into mischief. The Bible contrasts the fear of God with hardness of heart. Why is our society so arrogant and proud and obstinate toward a holy God? I'll tell you why, because there's no fear of God. You know why there's no fear of God? Uh, because people don't believe that their sin will cause a holy God to send them to hell. You know, you're loving, compassionate, all-accepting, all-tolerant. Jesus said in Matthew 10, 28, Fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him who after he's killed body and soul has the power to cast into hell. Uh, the fear of God starts with realizing that your sin will cause a holy God to send you to hell. Proverbs 8.13 says the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. Men will never depart from sin until they hate sin. And they'll never hate sin until they fear God. And they'll never fear God until they realize that a holy God will send them to hell for their sinning. Proverbs 16.6 says, By mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. Proverbs 14.7 says, the, 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 the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, to depart from the snares of death. Revelation 3.19, Jesus said, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore and repent. The Bible said that God shows His love for hell-bound sinners that are going to hell by rebuking them in their sin and urging them to repent. Proverbs 27.5 says, Open rebuke is better than secret love. <clears throat> He mentioned at the beginning that uh, I wouldn't preach to my son, and that's not what the word is. Well, my son is in my congregation every Sunday, and I don't scream at him and yell at him and call him names, even though my son is not regenerate right now. He has not believed in Christ yet. All three of my sons haven't trusted in me yet. Uh, Lord willing, they will soon, but I don't yell at my sons from the pulpit either and call them liars. Cheats, stealers, things like that. There's a place for me to talk to them and gently call them to repentance. 